Landon Starbuck joins me now to react to this, founder of Freedom Forever. Landon, thanks so much for being here. She seems like a totally sane and well-adjusted individual, doesn't she? I mean, honestly, I think this is a great representation of what the Alphabet community is truly all about. It really just embodies the average leftist because they can't articulate thoughts, can't debate, can't ever provide factual information, and when they're upset, they just scream and shout, right? Absolutely. And I think the biggest travesty is that all the mental um, asylums have been shut down because there's nowhere for these people to go except for these school board meetings and these hearings. And I've interfaced with this one on one. I've seen, you know, what these people are capable of and the hate in their hearts and how they manifest when they come and speak at podiums and at hearings. And, and I mean, honestly, there's a reason to be concerned for your safety I mean, around these people. They are unhinged. They're not well. And there's very little resources to help them get better. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. We need to uh, normalize the loony bin again, I guess. Um, now, sadly, the push for transgenderism is making its way to even the youngest of children. As three medical schools in North Carolina just announced they're diagnosing toddlers, yes, toddlers as young as two years old, as trans if they so much as pick up a toy that is stereotypically affiliated with the opposite gender. Now, this is obviously horrifying, but I need to know, Landon, why is this happening? Why are they now targeting infants with this mind virus? Man, it's coming in different directions. So there's Munchausen by proxy, This these moms that are you know, fomenting this um, in, in their kids, their own children. I exposed this in my human events article after Freedom Forever, my organization investigated the largest group of moms of so-called trans kids. And they were transitioning their kids as young as two. So I imagine they were using a lot of these same universities and hospital systems that endorse this idea that if your kid is two and they like to wear Elsa dresses or they like the color pink and they're a boy, that must mean that they're ready for their gender journey. Uh, not really, but that, that is the mentality of these people. And we're talking about the highest levels of the medical community endorsing this. It is so incredibly dangerous and we're legitimizing Munchausen by proxy as a, a, a condition that they need to affirm this in children. It's delusional, it's dangerous, and we're gonna have a generation of broken children. Absolutely, and I think the worst part about it is that they try to make it out to be for the child's good. Oh, we want them to transition before they have to go through puberty. It's in the child's best interest to target them while they're so young. But we know this is not really in the best interest of the child. Do you think the parents, I know you alluded to mental illness being the root cause of this, but, but how, are, how are parents okay with the whole concept of this even happening? I mean, are they just completely blind to the devastating long-term effects that this uh, embodies? Well, they're getting affirmation out of it. They're getting this social feedback loop of affirmation from their communities, from their political agendas. So it's really sad that these children are just caught up in the mix. And these children are genuinely experiencing gender dysphoria brought, about, brought upon by this contagion that's being you know, promulgated in the school systems. And so when you have all of this, these attacks on children, it literally is a war on children. You have the parents, you have the medical community, you have the school systems all contributing to this mass crisis. But you know, the only way we're gonna get our kids out of this is to educate more people on this and, and for them to understand that you know, the reason they wanna put them on puberty blockers is because they know that if they can stop puberty, that they're more likely to transition to stay on this journey. We know that statistically, if they are allowed to go through puberty, even experiencing gender dysphoria, they will desist. And the majority of these children who then go on to be adults end up identifying as gay, not trans. So there are no statistics to, to support this pseudoscience that they're promulgating. And we also know that these puberty blockers can cause lifelong implications. They claim that they're reversible. They're not. It stops the bone density, the brain development, and leaves boys with a micro penis that isn't necessarily even fully functioning. It's chemical castration. Yeah. We have to get these facts out. So thank you so much for allowing me to talk about this. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.